Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to the C Spot. I am Chef C, this is the C Spot, and we're cooking today. Okay, in my world, it's Tuesday. That means it's Taco Tuesday. Um, so what I try to do is every week, even if I don't film it, I uh, do something from the uh, Spanish culture, Mexican culture. If I've offended you, please, please forgive me. Um, but I like, I like, um, I'm in Texas, so Tex-Mex, uh, Mex-Tex, <laughs> Ameritex, hmm. Lexicon, eh, all that. Um, so they like flavor, I like flavor. Um, we're just going to do it a healthy way. So today we're doing barbacoa. And if I pronounce that wrong, y'all going to have to forgive me. <laughs> Because I hear and speak Southern. So it is what it is. Um, you should hear my French. It's bad. I can write French like you would not believe. Can't speak it. No. Anyway, so we're going to do barbacoa today. We're going to do it in an instant pot. So it's going to be quick. It's going to take about an hour. So quick as compared to four to five hours or eight hours if you do it in a slow cooker. Um, the uh, recipe is quite simple. And you can mix and match as you need. Um, in order to get the flavor that you're looking for. Um, I'm going to use about a third cup of beer. Okay, let me start this way. Let me start, let me start with what I'm actually putting in it. The meat that I'm using today is, um, I got a shoulder roast. It's about a two pound roast. No way in the world me and, me and, chef, uh, me and sous chef are going to be able to eat two pounds of, of meat. So I've cut it up, plus my Instant Pot is really small. So I'm only going to be used about half of it. So I'm going to use about a half a pound of meat today. Um, we're going to do something else with the other half. Maybe beef stew because it's kind of cold outside. Anyway, uh, so we're gonna do um, what did I say? I've got a pound. Um, so I've got I've got a two pound roast that I've cut in half, and then I've cut it into chunks. So I'm only gonna use half of it. So I'm using about a, a pound of, of beef. Um, we're gonna use like a third cup of beer. If you don't want to use beer, I'm fine with that. This you know I got a carbonation thing. I can't have carbonated drinks. I understand that. Um, use. Uh, either beef stock or water. Um, I'm going to use beer for the added flavor um, in mine. Um, it's got a cloves. Um, so we've got cloves. I've got ancho chili powder. I've got some coriander, some cumin, uh, salt, pepper, green chilies, tomatoes, lime juice, jalapenos. Yeah, everything. So what we're going to do first, we're going to make the sauce that's going to go in. And then we're going to come back and we're going to get the meat ready because we got to sear the meat on all the sides, mix it, get it nice and brown, put it in the pot with the, with, the, with the sauce, set it and let it cook. And then you're asking me the question, well, chef, you're going to show me how to make barbacoa, but then what am I going to do with it? Well, I'm making burrito bowls. So chipotle, eat your heart out. <laughs> Cause I know exactly what's in mine and it's going to be everything I like. I've got some black beans. I've got some cilantro rime. Uh, yeah, cilantro rime. Really? Cilantro lime, uh, uh, rice cauliflower. Um, going to have some sour cream, some cheese, all the good stuff. Maybe some corn thrown in there. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> so stick around and cook with me. All right. All right. All right. So as you see below, I have all the ingredients for our sauce. I'm going to make it in my little, my little um, food processor. If you don't have a food processor, you can use a, uh, you can use a mixer. Mixer? Mixer. I'm in a blender. Um, don't have that? Then by all means, honey pie, do it by hand. Nothing wrong with doing something by hand. I am a proponent to not washing a lot of dishes. So, yeah. So I'm on my own today. Sous chef is out, out and about. So I'm cooking so that he'll have something to eat when he gets home. I said I was going to use about a third. I'm going to take it to about a half. All right. So I've got a half cup of half cup of beer. That's going to be my liquid. I got a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. I got a can of chilies. I'm using the whole can. This is a four ounce can. It's 
smart me would have had this already opened. So y'all can tell I'm not working with the smart me today. That is if smart me can even get it open. Smart me can't get it open today. Um, anyway, so we're going to do a, a can of chilies. I'm going to do a, um, <laughs> we're going to do a tomato. I'm probably going to do two tomatoes. And we're going to cut those. I'm just going to cut those, um, uh, in, uh, since they're going to get pureed into the sauce. We're not even going to be delicate with it. We're just going to just chop it up. And I'm using the whole thing. Got my tomatoes in. I'm going to use, I got two jalapenos out here, but I'm only going to use one. And uh, we like the heat, so I'm leaving the seeds in. You don't like the heat, take the seeds and the ribs, ribs out. That's where your heat is, okay? Okay, we've discussed this before. I have mojada mobeta in my house, so I have to use heat. Um, I've got some diced onions here. I'm gonna go ahead and use all of these. I said all oh, like there was a whole lot in there. If you're chopping your onion, you're gonna use about a half an onion. I'm making a reduced version of this. Um, original recipe calls for four cloves of garlic. I'm gonna use probably about two cloves. It's gonna be about, mm, about two tablespoons. Excuse me, two teaspoons. Now, it doesn't matter who cuts your garlic. If you want to get the garlic out of the store that's already diced up, go by all means, go do it. Whatever's convenient for you. Um, if you want to use garlic powder instead, um, that's fine. Just instead of using two teaspoons, use one teaspoon. You can replace anything fresh with a dried. Um, you just have to adjust it by at least a half to um, a whole teaspoon just to make sure that you don't over overpower yourself. All right. I still have to do this. I, I still have to do this. Uh, I still have to do this. Uh, get that green can of green uh, green chilies open, don't I? We're gonna try and see if I can get it open in a minute. I think I got camera shock. All right, so I'm gonna do um, the juice of a half lime, and I'm gonna use the rest of that lime in my cilantro lime rice. Now, I will tell you that if you're going to um, zest the lime, zest it before you juice it, regardless. Um, let's start with the, the seasonings, and I'll come back to the green chilies, and I'll, I'll just add those last. All right, so I've got coriander here. I am doing a teaspoon. You're going to see me do a half teaspoon, and then another half because the holes in my jars aren't, aren't wide. Teaspoon of cumin. I'm gonna do a half a teaspoon of ancho. I like ancho, I like ancho chili powder. And it calls for a quarter teaspoon um, to an eighth teaspoon of cloves. Cloves are very, very potent. So when you're adding cloves to any dish, be careful because you can put it in, but you cannot take it out and it will overpower a dish. So I'm gonna do an eighth a teaspoon, which is also the equivalent to a pinch. All right, oregano, oregano, they want, um, we want a tablespoon, 
which is equals to three teaspoons. But you need to hit the you need to hit the the grinder with that, which I did not. Yep, real messes in the kitchen, y'all. Real messes in the kitchen. I do them. Sous chef cleans them until he kicks me out of the kitchen. All right, so I got a teaspoon of salt and I got some black pepper. I'm using coarse ground today, um, and that's because I am grinding this. And I like I like coarse ground. Sometimes I like to bite into the into the pepper because I'm weird like that. All right, let me go scavenge and find a can opener so I can open up this can, and I'll be back. Struggle, my people, the struggle in my kitchen that has almost everything for everything. I had to go pull out spare equipment. <laughs> I haven't used that thing in years, um, but we're using it today. Okay, so we've got my, my green chilies are open. Again, I'm searching for utensils that I should already have out here, but you know, that's how that works. Again, my kitchen. I'm gonna use the whole can and its juices. Because remember, this is a sauce. So if I need to add more liquid, I can. But once you add it, you can't take it out. We got everything in here. I love my toss, my toss method. Let's chop. Got a chunky sauce. All right. You know, you need to taste it for flavor. If you don't want to eat the sauce, you ain't going to want to eat it in the beef. That's it right there. All right, so I'm going to do a little cleanup. I'm going to bring the Instant Pot over with the beef, and we're going to get ready to stir that beef, all right? See you back in a minute. All right, we're back. And I have, um, I put the sauce in a bowl, well, the, uh, the sauce in a bowl. I will tell you that the taste that's going on in there, the flavor that's going on in there, would be good for a, uh, a salsa. Um, we can't have raw onions in our salsa. Um, uh, sous chef is allergic, highly allergic to raw onions. So anything that I cook with onions has to be cooked. Um, so what I would say is that for us, I would just roast the onions off in the oven first. And then I would do this. And I mean, I, just to munch on, it's so full. It's so full um, of flavor. I won't need a whole lot of anything. And you can make this, you can grind this down a little bit more. If I did it in my, in my uh, blender instead of my food processor, it would be, it would be uh, smoother. Um, but I'm really okay with it being chunky. And the reason why is because in my burrito bowl that I'm going to make, it's going to add um, some more uh, uh, texture. Okay, Instapot. All right, so I've got our oil heating up. My oil of choice today is going to be avocado. Um, avocado. Um, so I'm going to use some avocado oil. Um, this is my, my, my two pounds that I'm going to use half of this and I'm going to brown my meat, I'm going to brown my meat. Mm. I need something to put the brown meat on. I'm going to brown the meat and then, um, and then we're going to put that and the sauce back in. And we're getting ready to set this and forget it. So I think my pot is hot enough. Yep. Um, I have the small Instapot. I always tell y'all this um, because it's just me and sous chef. Um, and this is how I, I cook for just us. So that's three. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more chunks. I'm gonna put probably, I'm gonna probably do like three more. 
And that's going to be enough for us because that's going to be enough for us to have dinner today and then probably lunch tomorrow. Um, because this will cook down and then you're going to shred it. And so you're going to have, I probably have more sauce than I have meat. <laughs> but I mean, hey, you can't go bad. You can't, you can't go bad with that. So whenever you're searing your meat, when you go to turn it, if it's still stuck, it ain't ready. Whenever you can pull it off and flip it, that's when it's ready. And we're going to sear it on all sides. See, that one was ready. That's not. That one's fine, kind of. So we're going to let it sit just a little bit more. Usually takes around 30 to 45 seconds per side. And, um, and remember, we're not going for doneness. We're just going for, we're going for color at this point. Um, so yeah, I'll bring you back when I am ready to put the sauce in. Okay. All right. We got the meat coming out. Well, actually we can leave the meat in and put the rest of it in there. Don't forget your juices. And then we're going to add our, our sauce. Make sure everything's well covered. I still have it on saute. We're going to make sure everything is well covered. And the last ingredient we're going to add is the bay leaves. You add those in whole because I'm going to take those out. Bay leaves, bay leaves. I have a um, an aunt by marriage down in Louisiana who had a, a bay leaf tree. Um, and she sent me a whole smorgasbord of bay leaves. Love them, love them. I put that in everything. <laughs> All right. I hear I got a boil coming up from the bottom, which is good. As soon as I see those bubbles break the, break the surface, we're going to do a cancel and then we're going to have a chili flake. We're going to do a cancel and then we're going to uh, add the, uh, we're going to change our time. So this is going to cook on high pressure um, for an hour. So the question you ask yourself is, can you do this in a slow cooker? Um, yes, you can. If I don't have an instant pot, I can do it in a slow cooker. Um, can I do this? Uh, can I do this on the stove? <laughs> Why, yes, you can. Um, you can use a heavy bottom pot and do the same thing we just did on the stove. Um, stove is going to take you probably around five hours. Um, slow cooker, if you put it on the high speed, it's going to take you four to five hours. Low speed. Um, it's going to be on uh, about eight hours um, because you want it to where the meat just pulls apart. Okay, so I got bubbles coming to the surface. The surface. Me and my, my lid are going to argue a bit. All right, I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to check my pressure. I'm going to change my time to 60 minutes. Not to be confused with the TV show. Make sure my pressure level is still on high. And I'm ready to go. So I'll see you back here when we're ready to pull it out. Right on, right on. Okay, y'all, our meat is almost done. Um, so, I told you we're going to do like a, um, we're going to do, sorry about that. We're going to do a uh, burrito bowl. So what I've got here is I've got some um, rice cauliflower. And this is the Southwest, um, Southwest version. Version. Ten carbs um, per serving. This serves, this serves three and a half. 
So about uh, three quarters cups is uh, for a normal person. About a half a cup for us, us um, <laughs> sleevers. Sorry about that. Lost my train of thought right there in the middle of talking. Um, this has black beans, corn, red bell peppers, and seasoning already in it. I've got some black beans that I did earlier that I'm going to add to it. Um, I'm going to add a little lime juice from my other lime that I have and some uh, lime zest. And um, we're going to taste it and see what we need to add to it. Probably need to add some more uh, season. Anyway, this goes in the microwave. Um, or you can do it on stovetop. I'm going to do it in the microwave. Uh, for about five minutes and 30 seconds. Meanwhile, I'm going to show you what the meat looks like. So I'm going to release my steam. Probably get a good facial with that steam. Real soothing. <sighs> Behave. All right, steam is released. Ooh, let's pull out our bay leaves. Chuck always says that I, I forever am leaving in the bay leaves and he always gets them every time he goes to eat. So if there's, I told him it's like a prize. He won the prize. All right, so I got my bay leaves. Got some real good juice going on in here. I'm just saying. And I'm gonna use my tongs and my fork. You can use two forks. You can take it out, separate it with your hands if you want to, with some gloves. If you got asbestos hands, I do not, not today. This meat is real tender. It's gonna be good stuff. Now, from the amount of liquid that I'm seeing in here, I would say I probably could have reduced my liquids down just a little bit more instead of, um, and I should have done the third, the third of a cup of uh, the the beer instead of instead of the half. But seeing that my rice is going to be a little um, dry because we're using rice cauliflower, and if you were using regular uh, basmati rice or jasmine rice, you'd probably be in heaven right now because this this would. Uh, give you the right amount of moisture. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with the way this turned out. So you see that? I'll meet you back here when we go to plate. See you in a bit. All right, y'all, plate it and ready to eat. We've got our um, Southwest cauliflower rice on the bottom. That was just a microwave. I mean, you take your shortcuts where you can if, if you don't have time to cook a full, full on cauliflower rice. Um, then we've got our, our barbacoa on top with a little cheese, cilantro. You can add your sour cream, you can add your tomatoes. You can go all out with this. Um, we're simple here, so this is, this is about all I'm gonna be able to handle. Um, but yeah, so I mean, and if you wanna make it dairy free and vegan, um, there are ways to do it. Probably use jackfruit instead of using the uh, the um, the beef, and then if you use that jackfruit, then everything else will fall in line. Um, use some vegan cheese. Have fun with it. Enjoy. Um, yeah, good, flavorful, quick, and easy. And you hear Queen Maple outside barking her head off. Um, yeah, so that's that's a quick and simple, easy meal. As always, I'd like to thank you for coming to cook with me today. 
Thank you so much uh, for participating in my, in my journey. Um, you can reach me at the C-Spot Food, T-H-E-C-S-P-O-T-F-O-O-D.com. That's the website. At gmail.com, that is the, that is the, uh, the uh, email address. Um, you can see us on Instagram. We're on YouTube. Well, you're looking at me on YouTube, but you can see us on Instagram. We're on uh, Facebook. Um, and the cookbook is, is being published at the moment. You can pre-order. Um, the, there is a page on the website where you can pre-order the cookbook. Um, it has a lot of tasty recipes um, for bariatric and non-bariatric. I mean, if you haven't had the surgery, it doesn't matter. Still good food, fast, easy, simple. Um, I mean, quick and easy, simple ingredients, uh, things that you can find in your pantry or in your local grocery store. As always, I'd like to thank you for coming in and cooking with me today. It's been my pleasure here at the C-Spot. Uh, as always, I tell everyone and I tell you as well, in all that you do, remember to enjoy the journey. See you next time.